So you guys know that there are only five original Piston Cut racers that have yet to be released from Thailand. Original meaning from the first Cars movie. And we all have this weird curiosity because we don't really like the Thailand variants. Like a lot of collectors, fans criticize them. They got blurry decals. The axles are weird. The expressions are weird. Sometimes they're good. But we all still look forward to getting the new Thailand variant of all these classic racers. Like, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but like I understand it because they are just so iconic at this point, even the most obscure ones from that first Cars movie. And Ryan Shields here is one of those five. Now, there is a slight loophole with him because Mattel did do a metallic version so randomly. They're like, hmm, which Cars 1 racer do we do metallic? We could re-release the King, well, would technically be an uncancellation of the King because we only did him lenticular cancel the fixed size version. Oh, we could do Chick Hicks. What about Leakless? You know, everyone likes him. He's class. No, let's do Viewsing. That racer that is just kind of in the background. No one really knows about him too much. And yeah, so they did Ryan Shields in late 2019 from Thailand, but Metallic. The other four, Eugene Karbreski for Tanko. Ernie Gearson for Spearmint, Mac Icar for Apple, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. for Dale Earnhardt Inc. Obviously, we know those last two will never happen, most likely, because Dale Earnhardt Jr. will never be re-released, no matter what, because of the copyright issues with that, and then also copyright issues and all that good jazz with the Apple stuff, even though the Disney Store and Tomica were able to somehow release JP Drive, the Apple Next Gen, which... Mattel is yet to tap into, although would not be surprised if that rears its head at some point down the road. Mattel is just kind of waiting to like whip it out of their back pocket, like surprise, Cars 3 is still relevant, and bam. Anyways, welcome back to Pissing Up Teams, a series on my channel where I show you everything relating to the specific team in question. This is episode 14 featuring, obviously, View scene here. This was always going to be the next episode. I had planned on it since I did Mood Springs over a year ago and like six days. That's right, Mood Springs. The last episode came out on May 20th of 2023. And as I can see, like this is just the pattern every year. I do a bunch of weird type filler content, prototypes, customs, canceled cars these team videos, and then the rest of the year is just filled with like new releases, so I don't have to really worry about some of this stuff. And yeah, I mean, happens every year. Like right now, we're in the driest, like dry bone valley in the history of the Cars franchise. I have been clamoring for Case G, and I can only find them like for 50 bucks a pop from Greece. And I know the moment I buy those from Greece, they're going to show up in the U.S. for 10 bucks. So I'm just holding off. I'm waiting and we're going to do some other content. Might take a little break while we're in this drought so I can catch up on some stuff. I'm also really busy, so might as well allocate my resources properly. But we'll talk about that some other point. You know, let's just get right on in. Let's remember, I have reviewed almost all of these cars in other videos. So you can check out the closer inspections on those in those videos, which will be linked below or in the card session pop up. And so we're just gonna kind of show and talk about viewsing, just have a good old time here. We have a canceled prototype semi right here. We have a custom pity, custom hauler, and we have this weird factory custom buck bearingly with an alternative paint job that no one really knows about. So it's just gonna be a blast today. And we obviously have to start with the man who started it all, Ryan Shields, which is one of the least carified names in the entire cars universe, in fact. Aside from some of the main characters, you know, like Sarge or like Fillmore, Flo, Ramon, stuff like that. Bruce Miller, though, the RPM racer from Cars 3, holds the record for... What did I just do there? Holds the record for the least carified name ever. I mean, Bruce Miller, like what? But yeah, Ryan Shields is definitely not super carified either. And yeah, this has always been one of my favorite racers, like probably top 15. So like, you know, 50 percentile. I remember getting him in that weird 2009 four pack where they first started doing lenticular racers or lenticular cars. But at that point, it was just that weird blinking lenticular where they would like kind of close their eyes and then open them. 
And it was, yeah, before it predated the lenticular moving eyes where it would go like back and forth between expressions. So yeah, that was a very ugly version of Ryan that we're not going to address. He did get a rubber tie release shortly thereafter. But what we're looking at right here is the Motor Speedway of the South version from 2008. As you can see, they're made on the 277th day of 2007. So there's only a thousand of these bad boys. And fortunately, the Zinc Pest has not gone into this one yet. Very grateful for that because as you guys might have seen in my Manny Flywheel video a few days ago, my Motor Speedway of the South Manny Flywheel is bad. He is about to fall apart. So yeah, let's just get right on into it. You have the nice ViewZine Corrective Windshields logo there. I like that there's a little slogan attached because we all know that that dissipates by the time we get to the next gen in Cars 3, along with most slogans. I have to say though, I probably would have preferred if they did like white or yellow wheels on Ryan Shields here just to add a little bit of contrast because there's a lot of blue going on with him, a lot of teal. I think actually like a yeah yellow type of rim would be fantastic. I think that would be pretty cool. It's not the like best looking color. I don't know. I'd have to kind of see it, uh, you know, make a call on that. But yeah, you have the contingency sponsors there. A few more decals, all the good stuff there. Lots of window bars, just like Manny Flywheel. There's only a few racers that have five back window bars like this here. And Ryan and Manny are two of those. And his aren't like a wacky color though. They're just kind of like a dark teal. Whereas Manny's are like a light kind of purplish pink. I also like his darker spoiler back here. You know, that's actually really nice. It kind of matches those window bars and provides the contrast that I'm looking for there. And then, yeah, you have the same thing on the back for a corrective windshields. And to be honest, I feel like this would definitely be a very feasible, like next Thailand Piston Cup racer variant over Tank Coat. Like Tank Coat just feels too good to be true. Like that one is one of my favorites of all time. And I feel like they're just going to hold out on that one. Probably do this one because it wouldn't be super exciting because they already did one metallic. Then they would do Ernie Gearson. And then they would probably wait like another year and a half before they do tank coat. So yeah, let me know, like wake me up when 2027 Eugene Carbareski Thailand variant comes out and you know, we'll revisit this conversation. All right, let's do this pity. Cause I've really not shown this pity all that much on my channel. It was featured in a Giga Hall a year or so ago, probably longer than that, or maybe it wasn't. I honestly am not sure, but I am a big fan of it. It's a nicely done pity. It's simple. It's just one of the orderly pities that has his hat and base here painted the darker blue with some decals. And then Luke Pedalwork here donated some of his original tires. Yeah, or back in the day, they used to include this a very thin stack of tires in quads here that was not the correct shape or really design whatsoever took them a couple years before they started releasing pities with a correct stack of tires so yeah i don't know what they were thinking back then but they did always have the little hole that you could stab it with so yeah it's nice that the customizer included this stack of tires even though it's not like he did anything to it it was literally just taken straight from luke pedal work here in fact, yeah, this is the one that I have displayed with my Luke pedal work. But while we're on the topic of tires, I do want to just enunciate my point a little bit more. You know, this is what they started releasing, you know, light your text on the walls and then, you know, just correctly size and only two tires instead of four. And they still have the holes, of course. But yeah, this customizer is very smart with how he makes his customs because he just takes you know, what Mattel's already done. Like he looks and like examines what colors that they are. And it's like, oh, I can make a fusing pity out of that. Or I could make like a vinyl toupee pity out of that. Like pretty smart, I would say. I don't think many people would think like, oh yeah, the orderly pities color from Rescue Squad Mater is pretty much an exact match to, you know, this color on Ryan Shields here. So we can easily make a pity for him. And it's not like it can be compared to anything in the movie because Vuzine was one of the teams that they did not animate in the yeah original cars movie unfortunately they did not animate a whole bunch of the teams honestly and fusing was one of them and yeah there you go with the teal base there that is very reminiscent of the orderly pities yeah, it looks really good i'm a big fan i'm an enthusiast and we do have a toolbox here as well which is again made from a dynaco one that have the decal removed and then they've using one add on top of it there. And yeah, you just really would not know that 
it was a Dynaco's toolbox or the pity set because like the color matches super duper well. Like it's kind of uncanny because you don't think of like Dynaco blue really being too close to teal on the color spectrum, but it works. It's serviceable. It's the job done. All right, let's move on to, we're gonna save the semi cap for last for obvious reasons. We're going to go to a really nice, kind of cool, old, sneaky Buck Barringly. Buck Barringly is so underrated. He was one of the first Cars 3 stock cars to be released way back in the day. He was one of the first ever Cars 3 releases to be leaked. I think he first was leaked in like mid-December of 2016, along with Chip Gearings, Reb Meeker, and some of those other guys. And we were just freaking out, like, what is going on here? Is this Ryan Shields? Is this a new Fusing race? Like, what is happening? We were so confuddled. But yeah, this is good old Buck. This might even be one of the original ones. I might have gotten this one early and reviewed it because, yeah, that was just kind of my potion back then. I would get them from China early because they're on eBay, review them, and yeah, everyone loved it. My Jackson Storm and Cars Three McQueen videos are super duper popular because simply because they were like early by four or five months. But yeah, Buck here, nice, happy expression there, big old smile. You got the new modernized logo there, which, yeah, Pretty much the same, just a little bit more modernized. You have the corrective windshield slogan there. They went for the black wheel. See, they knew they had to add some contrast, but I still think the yellow would have been cool. I like the white stripes that they added, the streams. Looks pretty good. But yeah, as far as like stock cars go, like comparisons between cars one and cars three, Buck and Ryan are one of the more similar pairs. You know, you look at Chuck Armstrong and the Throttleman, they're pretty similar. You look at Rex Reveler and Sage Vanderspin, they are probably the most similar. But then you look at Krusty Roeder and Rev Rodages, and they are completely different. And then you really start to wonder, like, wow, it's crazy how they decided to do some of these designs. But yeah, the other buck, the sneaky little factory custom buck here is really interesting. It is a factory custom, but not a ton of them were made. It's almost like a little glitch in their system. They were trying to make, like they were trying to recreate Buck Barringly just as a straight up copy, counterfeit, nothing special, nothing to it. And then this popped out, like it just got screwed up. And then it's like, what the hell is this? But I like it though, because it's got this interesting like little hood patch here. A gradient forest green. Like, it's just super weirdly colored. Like, Aquaman colors here. You still have the Vuzine logo and all of that. He does have a slightly different expression. Maybe it looks more different than it is because the headlights and the grill and all those front decals are just gone. Looks so naked up front there. But, yeah, some coloring is also different. But besides the hood and kind of the front, everything is pretty much the same on these two. The quality isn't great. But that is because it's a factory custom. On the back here, you can see another like weird line they added down here for the corrective windshield. So yeah, there are quite a few differences, but most of them lie up front there. Like you could also just see like how profound these color splotches are. It doesn't blend together well. It does not blend well. Okie dokie. Now, in 2018, when Buck was re-released, he came with, well, there was a version, there was a packaging variant of him that came with this bonus collector card, which is a really nice, thick image here of the Vuzine logo. Really cool, great for thumbnails. Yeah, this is back when they, you know, did cool stuff like adding bonus collector cards to some of the releases. They don't do this anymore. At least they have not done it since 2018, which is kind of disappointing because you felt like you were getting a little bonus. Like every once in a while, you'd find one of these. It cost the exact same as the others but it would have a little collector card that came with a stand. Like it was awesome. And then they just were like, yeah, nah, we good on that. We don't need to do that, do we? Do we? All right, yeah, I guess I kind of skipped over the metallic version of Ryan Shields here, which I shouldn't have done with all this Thailand conversation. But yeah, I guess this is pretty much a glimpse of what Thailand Ryan Shields would look like. Expression slightly different, but nothing crazy like how they changed Dirks and Diego Stino or how they changed Johnny Blamer, which are the same model as Ryan Shields. I do like this metallic release a lot. Don't get me wrong. I think they metallicized the right portions of him. They left the number and some of the striping the same. Obviously, it's not perfect in terms of the clarity of the decals, but 
at least we know it probably won't get infected by zinc pests and start to crumble in our hands. It's like very reflective. And it was one of the first metallics they did. Kind of like one of the first of those rando metallics. You know, they did like Jonas Carvers eventually. And they did, I mean, Snot Rod, I think, was an amazing choice. Jeez. Oh, God. That tickled my pickle. And yeah, I mean, beyond that, they were all just super just out of left field. Some of those silvers were too. But yeah, I like this guy, despite how random he is. Like, where do I display him in my collection? Like, there's nothing similar to him except for like Jonas Carver's. Oh yeah, they did Dirks and Diagostino Metallic a year before. They did Rex Reveler Metallic, which is also super weird. So yeah, I mean, just an absolute hodgepodge because there's no other Cars 1 Metallic Piston Cop Racer that's just obscure. Like, obviously they have McQueen Metallic. They have the King Metallic, but... Beyond that, I mean, he doesn't fit with that. I can't display him with those. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, it just, it's weird. It's like the absolute black sheep of the collection. Just does not fit anywhere. All right, moving on to Cars 3 Next Gen. Michael Roeder here. Unfortunately, this guy is one of my least favorite Next Gens in the entire fleet because his color palette is just so boring and is so similar to the average color palette of most Next Gen racers. That's so why I don't like Spiky Phillips. I mean, Spiky Phillips and Michael Roeder here are very bottom tier for me. I mean, he's fine. Don't get me wrong. I like the VZ, but it just feels so generic. They, like, got rid of the spacing between view and zine, so it's all kind of like one word now. They got rid of the slogan. Black ribs with some silver trim. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a big fan. I like the yellow wing there, though. Like, they should have just completely started from scratch. Like, as you know, with some next gens, they were like, blow it up. We're just starting from scratch. Like, with Rev and Go, they're like, yep, we're done. I don't love Mephast Fong, because, again, he's got similar colors to this, but I think he's a little bit more creative. I mean, who else did they just blow it up with? I mean, Final Tupe is just the craziest one as he evolved. Oh, I'm trying to think. Someone that they just completely overhauled. Now I'll have to look at him. I'd have to kind of survey the landscape. Yeah, I'm just not a huge fan of this guy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I like your tractor better. The Vuzine Racing Tractor here that was released a couple years ago and then re-released earlier this year in Case A and basically is extinct. It's a very rare release because the Walmart version of Case A did not include him. But hopefully he reappears in another case down the road in 2024. He's got some interesting color. As you can see, he's mostly the blue, but he's got like a teal patch right here. Obviously, all the yellow as well. Yeah, that teal patch is just wild right there. It's just so out of nowhere. And yeah, I mean, with this too, like you can barely read the text on the hood there. Like it's a fine tractor. He looks happy. He's a giddy, giddy tractor. I think, yeah, he was first released in 2021 in that infamous super rare case with Hot Rod Louise Nash. I remember. I never found this guy in a store. This was one of the few 2021 releases I never found in the store. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you remember from any of the Hunt episodes, but I don't think I ever did. I remember finding Hot Rod Louise Nash, though, at Target. I was super pumped about that, and he was already taken, and I never found Hot Rod Louise Nash again. So, yeah, you could just tell that that case was very rare. Yeah, this is basically Michael Roeder compacted into a tractor. I mean, yeah. I guess they got the job done. It's what he's supposed to. Although, he should be a little crankier. Like, I don't know how... I mean, I guess it makes sense. You go from next to the tractor. Like, how could you not be happy? Like, all tractors are just inherently happy. All right, let's go on to the hauler here. The custom hauler. We're going to detach this. Hopefully, it doesn't break. Oh, that was easy. So, this was done by Jim Scavenger. I did review this a long time ago. And this is probably one of his most accurate customs ever. Because it's exactly how the canceled version would have looked, which we got a good look at. It was on the back of some of the haulers that were released late in 2010, like Ben Crankleshaft, Chet Boxcar, and Oliver Lightload. You could see them on the back. And by them, I mean all three of the haulers that they canceled that were super close. Vitaline, Gasper, and Fusing. They are basically, you know, the three dragons of the apocalypse, whatever you want to call it. They live together in infamy because they were so close equally all so close and they all three got canceled very very sad 
And yeah, fortunately, a lot, I wouldn't say a lot, but a few little prototypes leaked out of them and I'll be showing one of the Vuzine ones here. Very grateful to have that. More of the Vuzine semi leaked out than Vitaline, more Gasparin leaked out than Vitaline. But between Gasparin and Vitaline, it's a little nebulous. I'm not sure which one there's more of, but yeah, this is a great custom. I mean, it's perfect, simple. And it is done, I'm pretty sure, using the Cars 3 bumper save hauler because you didn't have to change any of the coloring. It's pretty much the exact same color. Or wait, maybe? No, yeah, it's definitely Cars 3 bumper save because the color just matches so well. Bumper save got too much love. I mean, how is it fair that bumper save had three haulers released and some sponsors have zero? Like, it just does not compute. Let's take a look at the license plate here. Oh, it's cool. Just view Z, view Z with the 39 on the mud flaps there, which is a nice little detail added by Jim Scavenger. He didn't have to do that, but it looks good. And yeah, Jim Scavenger, like the customizer of the pity, very wise about what he does because he doesn't want to paint these trailers. It's hard to paint the trailers because they're plastic, which means it's hard to paint these hats because these are plastic. So really all you could do is paint this area. I mean, you could do the other stuff, but it's just a lot more of a hassle. There's more room for air. So if you could find a hauler that you could just put new decals on instead of having to paint it, that's a big win. And that's exactly what Jim Scavenger was able to do here with the bumper save hauler from Cars 3. Also taking the combustor hauler from Cars 3 and turning that into, I believe, a clutch aid hauler. Yeah, I mean, he's very crafty with it. But yeah, again, simple decals, exactly what it would have looked like. Bingo, bango, bongo. We all know what these haulers do. Super. Super what? Super what, Mr. Docket? I was just going to say, like, I don't know. There's like so much functionality to it, but like, and I always struggle to get this last support out because there's the little nail right there. But yeah, I mean, it's like, I feel like these supports, like, are these even necessary? Like, put your money into something else, Mattel. I don't know. Just my thought on it. I mean, it's cool though. Wish it could be flat though age-old debate like why don't these open from the back like they should in the, the movie and then they're also super stiff and you feel like you break them like every time you touch them and then you're able to like snap them back but it makes like a really weird noise it sounds like you cracked it but yeah looks good on the back i always love the racing text that these haulers have just looks really cool yeah, there you have the roof using corrective windshields. And let's move on. Last but not least is going to be the canceled version of the semi here. So you can see he does have a unique expression. It's not as crazy as the Gasprin or the Vitaline semi cabs would have had where they're like literally, I don't know. They look like they're sucking in. They look like they might be constipated. Who knows? But this one just looks kind of happy and content and just chilling. So as you can see, he's got blue eyes, but yeah, the logo on the hat's pretty much the same there. I did review this guy a while ago though, I believe. The only semi-cab I have not done, I believe, is fiber fuel that's canceled. But yeah, you have the 39 there on the sides. Coloring's a little different, but that's as to be expected. Now, unfortunately, my Vuzine semi is missing this back portion right here. You wouldn't think that those would be separate pieces, but yeah, this is a separate piece from all this. So yeah, it's missing the mud flaps, which would have had a decal on them, and he would have had a license plate as well. So unfortunately, I'll take what I can get though. Like all that matters to me is that I have the character himself. I'm not super concerned about all the ancillary stuff. But yeah, guys. Oh, what the hell? I don't think I have anything else to show. I do have a little bit of a track record of forgetting like some random related item. Like, I believe I've forgotten the tractor. I've forgotten, like, the damaged version of the racer. But is that, like, it's just a custom. I mean, I don't know. I think I probably do have a damaged version of Ryan Shields, but I don't think he's necessary to be included, guys. Do you really think so? No. No. But let me know in the comment section below, who is your favorite member of Team Vuzine? I do feel a little bad. I don't have any representation of a crew chief for him. That's something I want to get down the road. Like, at the end of the day, like, I really want to have... A hauler, a 
pity, like one pity, one crew chief for every Cars 1 sponsor. And the crew chief could be one of those factory custom trucks without the headset. Unfortunately, though, they just never did one for Viewzine for whatever reason. I don't know how they selected the ones that they did do, but yeah, they just never did one for Viewzine. All good, though. I will get one eventually. At least I have the Pity, I have the Hauler, and a whole bunch of other random stuff. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time for another one. Bye now. When it all burned out and you were left with nothing, did you question God or did you see it coming? Come on.